Hello and welcome to Ott and Math. In this edition, we're going to continue with our discussion on sequences and series by doing some problems for sequences and series. So in the first problem, we're asked to find the first six terms of the sequence. So what we want to do is we want to put in our domain and recall from the prior lesson that the domain typically will start with one and we're going to add one for each value in the domain. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6 in this case. So I've got <clears throat> 1 is my input, 2 is my input, 3 is my input, 4, 5, and then 6. So I end up with 10 over 1, and then 10 over 2, <clears throat> which is 5, and this is just 10. 10 over 3, 10 over 4, 10 over 5, and then 10 over 6. So those are the first six terms of the sequence for this particular function, where I assume that n begins with 1 and goes to 6. In the next problem, we're given a sequence, 7, 11, 15, and 19. We're asked to describe the pattern, write the next term, and then write a rule for the nth term. Well, if I take a look at this particular sequence, I notice that it's an arithmetic sequence, which means that there's a common difference between each of the terms. And that common difference is going to be 4. So I start with 7, and for each value, or for each input, I'm adding 4 to the prior term. So now I'm going to write a rule, <clears throat> and we'll introduce arithmetic sequences in the next lesson. But I know that whatever my value is going to be, say for a sub n, where n represents whatever term that I have, it's going to be equal to the first term plus, we'll say n minus 1. So in this case, this is my second term. This would be n minus 1. This would be 1 times what my common difference is, which is 4. So if I were to rewrite this, it would be a sub n, whatever term, here's my rule, is equal to 7 plus 4n minus 4. Or a sub n is equal to 3 plus 4n, where n is the term. So in this case, my term is the first term. This is my second term. This is my third. And this is my fourth. So n is equal to 1 2, 3, and then 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7. 3 plus 8 is 11. 3 plus 12 is 15. And 3 plus 16 is 19. So this particular formula will work. The next problem, we're asked to write a series using summation notation. So remember, summation notation is represented by the Greek letter sigma. I write in my letter here. It can be whatever letter I want. I'm going to start with the value 1, and I notice that I have five terms in this particular sequence. And it looks like for each term, I'm multiplying i times 10. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. In the final question, we're asked to find the sum of the series. <clears throat> now we know uh, that we're going to square each input um, up to the fifth input. So it would be 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Now, of course, we could just add these together. But what we want to do, understanding that this value for n5 could be much higher, is we want to use our rule. So recall from the lesson that the rule for uh, the value for the sum where n or i is squared, the variable squared, is going to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. So we go back to our problem and we write the formula n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6 and that's going to be our sum. So we know the n is 5 times 5 plus 1 is 6, times 2 times 5 plus 1, which is 11, 
all over 6. These cancel or reduce to 1, and I'm left with 55 as the sum. Now we can just double check that by taking the inputs and providing the outputs and then adding those outputs together. So we have 1 squared is 1, plus 2 squared is 4, plus 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. We end up with 5, 14, 30. This also equals 55.